The fantasy basketball season is well and truly underway now, and we are going to be breaking down week three, all the streaming days, what the schedule is looking like, and who should you be targeting to win your fantasy basketball matchup. Let's go! Jordan, open. Chicago with the lead. Brian, to shot. Not a game. Not a game. We're talking about practice. LeBron James with no record. G'day and welcome to the Ball Boys Fantasy Basketball Podcast. I'm your host, Mitch Casey, and you can find me on Twitter at Ball Boys Fantasy. And today we are going to be previewing week three in the NBA calendar for fantasy basketball purposes, looking at the weekly uh, breakdown, what days we can look to stream. If you are in a weekly changes league, what uh, teams are playing the most amount of games, which teams are playing the least amount of games. If you're in a daily changes leagues for points and category leagues, what other days that we can look to attack and add players that we're going to play on our starting teams and which categories are we targeting for that week and who are the best players to help get you those wins in the uh, categories that you are after. So we're going to be breaking down week three and just a little preview. It's a very weird week when it comes to streaming. In fact, I think Streaming is not going to be the most effective when it comes to um, winning your matchup this week. Just the way that things work out with things like Election Day. Uh, The NBA calendar is very strange in week three. So still gives us another week. And again, just my general philosophy, my general strategy for streaming in early parts of the season is that it is not as important. And I would probably use this week just because of the way it has shaken out as a week to say, okay, this might be the last week where we are really focusing on um, long-term. and uh, But it does start to, from this point on, say you've lost your first two matchups in your fantasy basketball league. Well, you maybe want to start to prioritize the immediate benefit of winning now and trying to get as many games played as you possibly can. If you've won one or two of your first matchups in your fantasy league, then you are still, I think, in my opinion trying to go through and focus on long-term. And especially in a week like this, where streaming, I think, is a little bit uh, muted in its value, focusing on trying to keep an ad or two throughout the week to make sure that if someone does drop someone and they're impatient and there's a a player that, you know, suddenly has uh, value for an extended period of time that you can prioritize adding them, even if it doesn't help you so much for this week in streaming, but you've got that extra player or that extra value on your team for the next several weeks to help you throughout the season. But again, it does start to become a bit more team dependent depending on how you are going so far. Speaking about how we are going so far, I don't know if you guys uh, want or are interested in this, but I wanted to use this show and I don't know if I'm going to continue to do this, but let me know down in the comment section below on YouTube if you guys care at all about the... uh, the Industry Pickup League, I'm going to just share over what we've been doing in this one here. Uh, oops, that is not the window I want. That is me right there. Um, the windows that we are looking for here, here we go. Pop my little head over here. So the Industry Pickup League is obviously, if you're haven't, if you not aware, it is the uh, league where myself and 11 other expert and analysts are doing a what we would call the flagship league for fantasy basketball, where we are representing the, uh, the best of the best and myself, (laughs) me and 11 other really smart people in a league where we are going head to head and making it as publicly viewable, viewable as possible. You can check out this league, uh, over at industrypickup.com and, you know, go along and have a look at all the transactions and things like that. So just wanted to sort of use this as a a platform to sort of let you know where I am sitting in industry pickup. The first week I went up against Josh Lloyd from Locked On Fantasy Basketball and he beat me by, uh, I lost 6-3 to him. It's a head-to-head category league, most uh, each category league. It was a closer matchup than maybe that 3-6 suggests. It was close in assists and steals, but ultimately I went down. Week one, I wasn't panicking too much, but um, not the best start. But this week, I have triumphed over Dan Titus uh, from Yahoo Sports, winning 5-4. 
and just to give you guys a bit of an insight into what my team is looking like. So I've had a rough going, has the big boys uh, over uh, for this team. I've got a pending transaction. I'm not going to show you what that is because that will reveal who I'm trying to add. Um, but I, at the moment, I'm dealing with a few injuries right now. I've got Bradley Beal, who hasn't played a second for my team just yet. Um, Darren Fox has obviously gone down with his ankle injury. Scoot Henderson, who sucked to start the year more than I thought. But again, I was a little bit more, uh, a little bit expecting that. He's obviously down with an injury. And Wendell Carter Jr. has also gone down with an injury. So first two weeks, I've had four injured players so far. But again... Still trying to hold on and I'm trying to say again, someone pointed out that I say that a lot and I apologize. I'm going to try to break the habit, but I'll, I'll still slip up every now and again. I don't know why I, I say that, but yes. Anyway, not saying that anymore. Maurice uh, Mo Wagner is the guy that I picked up, spent a lot of fab for him um, and he didn't start. So we're going to wait and see how that shapes out. But my team has uh, performed relatively well. A couple of disappointments so far. Giannis, I want to pick it up a little bit. Um, I want, uh, who else? Demontis Sabonis is kind of doing his thing. Chris Paul's been a little bit concerning, but his assists have been nice, averaging eight so far and 1.6 steals. I've been really trying to stream my ass off this week because I did not want to go down in a league as competitive as this, um, you know, to a, two losses to open out the season. So uh, Gary Patton Jr. has been there to help me win the steals category. So one, the rebounds, assists, steals, blocks, and turnovers lost the field goal percentage, which is a bit of a strength of my team. Um, so Dan obviously just went nuts with field goal percentage this year. I was a little bit lower than the first week. I think it was closer to 50% week one. Um, so it's a little bit down for me. Uh, hopefully we can pick that back up next week. I'm going to lose threes and free throw percentage nearly every week. And my points are starting to become a issue for this team. I'm just I'm discovering that I'm not very competitive in points so far. And what I like to do is I also like to, and I don't know if uh, most leagues have the ability to do this, but what I do like to do, especially early in the season and also close to the playoffs, is have a look at, okay, well, yes, I won my matchup 5-4, but how do I actually compare to the rest of the league? So, for example, if I look at my rebounds, I had 281 rebounds. That had me the most in the entire league this season. So my rebounds are super, very strong. Um, my assists, 138. I lose to Reclean. I lose to Rhett Bauer. Uh, I beat Josh Lloyd. Would have been nice if that was last week. I lose to Kingy. Um, so I've lost to a few teams here, so I, and I beat a bunch of the teams down the bottom here. So I'm probably middle of the pack when it comes to assists. My steals are lower than I would like. So again, uh, damn it, I said it, I said it there. <laughs> I've got to try and break the habit. So I, I, whilst I got a win, I'm still a little bit nervous about how my team is performing. I know the injuries are, are sucking, but. Um, I want to try and improve myself. I've had a bit of a, a shitty schedule. So this week I only had three games from Giannis, two games from Kings players. Two of my top four picks are Kings players in Fox and Sabonis. So it wasn't the best schedule for me this week. So I'm hoping I can bounce back. I, I'm starting, I want to in the next couple of weeks decide whether I want to lean into more of a punt points situation. It's hard to tell at this stage because I have a couple of players like Bradley Beal and Darren Fox and Scoot Henderson and to a lesser extent, Wendell Carter Jr., all out injured. And I think all of those players have a chance to be scoring more than 15 points a night. Um, and I've had to substitute instead of those players, guys like Derek Lively, uh, Gary Payton Jr., who I've streamed in and, and, and things like that. So I don't know if my point scoring over the last the first two weeks have been reflective of what my team will be when hopefully, fingers crossed, touch wood, I am at full strength. But if I continue to be quite low, and again, if, if, we, if we look back at that... Um, that thing there, my points, I think I was last, so 517 points. Yeah, I think I was last out of, out of all teams this week in points, and I was towards the bottom last week in points as well. So not a great start in that category. Now, I don't mind punting points. It's not something I set out to do in this draft, so that is a little bit concerning. But if I can lean into that moving forward, maybe work some trades and things like that, capitalize on some value of some players, um, and strengthen areas such as my assistance deals, then I think uh, that might be a good way to improve this team, but we'll still have to collect a little bit more data to go from there. Next week, I am versing Mike Barner and his team. He's also got a couple of injuries. He's got the, the CJ McCullum thing going on, uh, but his team is led by my guy, Jason Tatum. So maybe the one week of the year that I'll be rooting against him <laughs> this season. He's got Walker Kessler to deal with, who's been a bit disappointing. So his team, I think, is, is gettable. Uh, I think... Um, 
what I think it's going to come down to some some assist numbers and potentially some steals. It always seems to come down to steals. So those are going to be my targets. But again, when we talk about streaming later on in this podcast, um, it won't be as effective as what it would normally be. So we'll have to rely on the top heavy guys there. But enough about my team and the industry pickup. Let me know, guys, if you want to see more of that. Um, let me know if you don't care at all and you want to don't waste your time. Let me know that as well. Open to feedback there. Let's talk about week three and the preview. And like I said, it's a very strange week because this week we have a Tuesday game, uh, Tuesday day, where there are no games played because of the election day. The NBA has elected to not play any games to encourage people to vote on that day, which... Look, I don't want to get any political, but uh, I don't know. I guess if that's if you're not voting because you're going to an NBA game, I mean, are you going to go vote anyway? Who's to say? But um, Monday, there are 12 games on. There are zero games on Tuesday. On Wednesday, when we're doing our recap show, there is 14 games. So get ready for a two-hour podcast on Wednesday night. Uh, Thursday, there is two games. Friday, nine games. Saturday, four. And Sunday, 11. So of the... Six days where there are NBA games, three of them are days where you're probably not going to be able to stream on Monday, Wednesday, and Sunday. And even Friday is not something that's clear-cut for everyone. Now, again, I always preface these shows by your team, your individual situation might be different, but I like to use the cutoff of 10 games played as a day where we can consider someone a streamable or a streamable day. We call those quality games. And on this week, there's only three of them, and they are three in a row. So when it comes to quality games, there is not going to be an ideal situation for many teams. So you might actually be in a situation where in a week like this, you're not going to have to worry about getting back-to-backs or anything like that. In fact, in this video, I've eliminated the back-to-backs because... You're not going to add anyone on Monday to stream. You're not going to add anyone on Tuesday to stream. You're not going to add anyone on Wednesday to stream. So you're going to be streaming Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and maybe Sunday. So if you want to go hard, you could just add the best player on Thursday, the best player on Friday, the best player on Saturday, and just use your three ads on three different players. And that's why I say that streaming this week is not going to be as effective because your overall games played uh, number might not be as movable in a week like this compared to a regular week where um, you're essentially going to have three super heavy days where you're going to have 30 games played over three days. And then the other games, you're going to just try to put in as many uh, players in those spots as possible. So again... Don't have to worry too much about back-to-backs. You're just going to be trying to add players on that Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, maybe Sunday, depending on your situation and your team to get the uh, the categories that you're looking for. Let's talk about weekly leagues. There are three teams in um, the NBA that have a two-game week, the Cleveland Cavaliers, the Portland Trailblazers, and the Toronto Raptors. So for weekly league uh, teams, it's a tough decision. I don't know if I would be starting someone like a Jarrett Allen in a weekly changes league because he's still coming back off, you know, his ramp up from injury and he's a little bit more towards the back end. Two games for a player like that is not very many. So I think he's someone that I'd be benching. I'd still be starting players like Evan Mobley, starting players like Donovan Mitchell, but the more back end guys, I don't think I would. Similar with Portland, if you're in a weekly changes league, Shaden Sharp is someone I wouldn't bother starting. Um... DeAndre Ayton, even he's someone that maybe you, you don't... In fact, I don't know if there's anyone on Portland that you are in a must-start situation in a weekly changes league. Toronto, you're still starting Scotty Barnes. My Scotty Barnes, uh, love him in my two leagues that I have him. He's doing really well in the industry pickup league, which you just saw. He is helping me scrape to some victories, or at least the victory this week. He did a lot for me, but he's probably the only one out of that team. Pascal, yeah, maybe you could probably start Pascal. OG, I don't even know if you could start OG. Again, his big thing is threes and steals, one of the easiest or most readily available stats around. So I think of the Toronto Raptors, you're only really starting Scotty Barnes, maybe Pascal Siakam, depending on what you're looking for. Um, And OG, I don't know if that's going to be the case. Uh, The same with Jakob Pertl. I don't know if you're starting Jakob Pertl. It will be depending on who you're replacing them with, but two game weeks, for those three teams are are a killer for those weekly leagues. The rest of the league has three game weeks. So we'll go through the three games. Um, Atlanta, Charlotte, Chicago, Denver, Memphis, New York, Orlando, Phoenix, and Sacramento and Utah all have three games. 
and on the four-game slate there, most of the NBA has a four-game week this week. So Boston, Brooklyn, Dallas, Detroit, Golden State, Houston, Indiana, LA Clippers, LA Lakers, Miami, Milwaukee, Minnesota, New Orleans, OKC, Philly, San Antonio, and Washington. So 17 teams have the uh, have the four-game week, uh, three teams with the two games, and obviously 10 with the three. So that's why the difference between those two and four, when over half the league has four games and you have two, it's very hard to start those guys because you're at a major disadvantage when it comes to games played in a weekly changes format. Um, so, yes, just keep those in mind uh, for the two-game weekers. All right, let's move on to talking about quality games. Now, because the the limited quality games, there's only three quality games, uh, quality days really available in the NBA this week with the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, um, 2 nine, four schedule. The best amount of quality games we can get is two games because no teams obviously play you know three nights in a row. You can only get players that uh, teams that play two of those three nights, and those teams are the uh, Atlanta Hawks, the Boston Celtics, uh, the Milwaukee Bucks, and the Orlando Magic. Um, all play two of those three games. So if you're adding those players, they will definitely be helping you out. But there are also a lot of teams that play no quality games. So we look at uh, players that. You, if you add them this week, you're probably not going to use them. Portland, New York, and Denver. So, for example, if you're looking to add someone like um, a Reggie Jackson to fill in whilst uh, Jamal Murray is questionable for this week and, and potentially going to miss some games, you might think, okay, Reggie Jackson's going to step in here. I'm going to be able to stream him for assists. Well, no, probably not because you're not going to use him at all because Denver play on the Monday, 14 games, the Wednesday, 14 games, and the Sunday, 11 games. So you will not use him at all this week, essentially. So um, despite him having elevated value, in a weekly changes league, it's a little bit different because obviously you're just putting your lineup out there. But in a daily changes league, if you're setting your lineups each day, he's probably not going to still be one of your 10 best players. So you're probably wasting an ad by getting someone like a Reggie Jackson. Similar with a New York. So if you're grabbing someone like a Dante DiVincenzo or uh, a Quinton Grimes to st- uh, stream in sort of threes or uh, Josh Hart, if you're looking for a, a rebounds and steals or something like that, you're probably not going to use those players. So keep that in mind when looking at the uh, guys that you are streaming in. A lot of the players or none of the players from these teams will appear on my streaming targets when we talk about those uh, uh, later. So definitely one to always keep in mind. Speaking of streaming targets, I forgot to do this last week and I'm, I'm terribly sorry. It just completely slipped my mind, but we are bringing back the targets for different categories. Now, this is primarily for category leagues. If you are in a points leagues, these first list is probably the biggest one to keep in mind. Uh, but I will talk about players that are probably more points specific or points league specific players in this list. So Talking about points, I've tried to limit it to three or four players in each category. I could go on a massive, massive list. It's very hard to sort of determine how who's available in your league. But I'm trying to limit it to players in this week in particular that play on those quality games. So all of these players will play at least one of the quality games this week. So you will actually be able to use them. And I think that they are really good targets for each of these categories. So talking about the points category first. First target, Cole Anthony. Now, Cole Anthony is someone who can be hot and cold, but at the moment, Markel Fultz is sort of questionable and not sure about um, what his availability is going to be like this week. But even if he is available, he should still play low to to mid-20s in minutes. And he is someone that comes on and he is asked to score. He's asked to shoot. So he is definitely someone that if you're looking for points, he is someone that can definitely help you. Jonathan Kaminga is another one here. He's... uh, you know, reliability is a little bit up in the air when with the return of Draymond Green. But again, when he does come on, I said again, far out. Um, but he is coming in to score and he is coming in to get up shots. And his usage is still, it's still quite high. Last week in his three games, he had a 33% usage, averaged 15 points. Didn't really do anything else. 0.73s, two rebounds, less than an assist less than half a steal, really nothing else outside of scoring. But when you're streaming, you're looking for a particular category, Kaminga can do that. He can put up some points. And he has done that over his last three games. Even in low 20s, high teens and minutes, his usage has been extremely high when he's been out on the court. Um, So he is 
only useful as a streamer for points and not really much else. He's not by any means a must-hold player. And the last player I think is probably my favorite of this bunch, and that is Malik Monk. Now, if um, Darren Fox continues to be out, this is even better. But even if Fox does return, he can be someone that is very valuable when it comes to uh, streaming points. He actually is good a streamer across a bunch of other categories as well. Um, in the last two games, he's played 25 minutes and put up 17 points per game. He's also done it with three threes and four and a half assists, shooting 86% from the free throw line. So he will appear on this list a few other times. So Malik Monk is one of my favorite streams this week. The um, Sacramento Kings play on that Friday. They do play the Monday and Wednesday, but they do play the Friday where there are nine games. So just double check that on that Friday that you're able to use a player like Malik Monk. Um, and he is going to be uh, someone you can stream in. So he is someone that you can have a look at for points. Let's talk about threes. And uh, I could have put Malik Monk on here, but he was on the last one here. So he is definitely an option as well. But we're going to target some other players. Malik Beasley, the other Malik. Malik Beasley is someone who can definitely add in. The Bucks play on... When did the Bucks play? They play on the Thursday and the Saturday. So they play on a game on a day with two games and four games. So if you add him on the uh, Thursday, you can use him for both those low volume days and he can give you six threes in those two games or seven threes in those two games quite comfortably. Cole Anthony, again, I should mention the Orlando Magic have a good schedule once again this week. They play similarly on the Thursday and Saturday on that two game and four game day. And Aaron Neesmith for the Indiana Pacers is someone that we also want to pay attention to. He's been getting a few more minutes playing uh, a bit of power forward as well, taking some minutes off Obi Toppin. They play on the Thursday. They don't have the backup, but again, in this in this week, we're not worrying about back-to-backs as much. So you add him on Thursday. You can then look on uh, Friday to see if you can add someone like a Malik Monk. And then on the Thursday, you could target either a Cole Anthony or a Malik Beasley, depending on who's available if you're looking for threes. And just go three ads, bang, 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 use them, then drop them, and then uh, have an ad up your sleeve at the end of the week for someone, maybe for some long-term potential in mind because on Sunday there are the 11 games and you won't use them. So that's for the threes. Let's talk about rebounds. Um, starting off on this list with a couple of the Orlando Magic guys, Mo Wagner and Goga Badatze. Um I, like you said, like I said before in the uh, industry pickup section, I grabbed Mo Wagner. I thought he was going to be the starter. Gogo Badadze started that last game. I don't know if that's going to be an every night thing. It'd be interesting to, interesting to see how things line up on the Monday. Either option can give you good rebounds. And I do think it's going to be, it might end up being close to sort of like a 25, 21 minute kind of distribution either way. I don't think one of them is going to run out and average 30 minutes per game. But I think both of these guys can give you close to sort of seven to eight rebounds per night. Uh, and again, the Orlando Magic play those two quality games on the Thursday and Saturday. Uh, and Kevin Love is the other option here who the Miami Heat play on the Saturday on the four game slate against Atlanta. And he has been getting some decent uh, minutes and he doesn't do much else, but he what he can do is he can rebound. So he is someone that if you're looking for those rebounding numbers, um, he's someone you can have a look at. And again, I'm not too worried about back-to-backs or anything like that. So on that Friday, maybe you add one of the Wagners or, or the um, Gogo Badatze types or, or someone else on the Friday, for example. And then on the, on the Saturday, you look to grab a Kevin Love as well and really bolster those rebounds and you drop him the next day because he's not someone you want to grab long-term. But in the last... Last week, he only played the one game um, in the last week, and he but he did have... Hold up. Where am I looking at here? He did have the five rebounds in the last game. He's missed the last couple, but should be he should be back. He looks like he is... Yeah, they listed him as he's playing uh, on Monday for the left shoulder injury, so he should be return, returning. And when he was playing, he was playing minutes in the low 20s, and even in that time, was putting up nine, 10 rebounds per night. So he is someone that you could have a look at specifically for... Uh, streaming in rebounds. Let's talk about assists. I've got four players here. You're going to see a lot of Magic players because, again, they, they're Thursday, Saturday, um, pseudo back-to-back. Uh, the the low-volume days is very valuable. Jalen Suggs. I think Jalen Suggs is someone that needs to be rostered in every 12-team category league anyway because he is someone that I believe is going to continue to get high minutes in the 20s, um, assists, steals, decent blocks, I think he's looking better on offense. His most recent game was a little bit disappointing from that point of view, but Fultz is still out. 
Um, even when Fultz comes back, he was starting at shooting guard anyway, and I think that his defense is going to be good enough to keep him out on the court and playing the minutes that he does. He will rack up assists, and he will, of course, appear in the steal stream later on as well. Bogdan Bogdanovich is another one. Again, the Atlanta Hawks have that good schedule with the two uh, quality games on the Thursday and Saturday, and he is someone that even coming off the bench can rack up sort of three to six assists per night, so you might get, you know, Maybe you get 10 assists out of him over the two days, uh, and then you can move on from him. Similar sort of thing with Kyle Lowry with the Miami Heat, like we spoke about with Kevin Love playing on that Saturday with the four-game slate. And the last player here is Dyson Daniels. Now, it was just released today that CJ McCollum is dealing with a, uh, a collapsed lung. So I think that Dyson Daniels is going to get a big step forward. Now, we saw a little bit of a boost with him when we had... Um, uh, pff, why am I blanking? Uh, like Zion Williamson and Brandon Ingram both out. Um, so he got a bit of a boost. But when a player like CJ McCollum, who's their you know, de facto point guard goes out, I think Dyson Daniel is going to really benefit in a situation like that because um, CJ was kind of operating as their point guard a lot of the time. And I think Dyson Daniel is going to really have to step into that role. He, he fits that role a little bit better than other players like um, Jordan Hawkins, who's a bit more of a shooter type, who kind of filled the void of a Brandon Ingram more so. But I think Dyson Daniels is going to be needed more with uh, CJ McCollum out. So I'd really like him as a assist stream. The schedule is not as strong for the um, New Orleans Pelicans, but they do play on the Friday, which is the nine uh, nine game slate. So if you can use him on that day, I think he is worth adding. And I do think there's some short-term value with him here, at least uh, speculatively, for the short to medium term whilst uh, CJ McCollum is going to be out. So here's someone that you could definitely have a look at. Um, And he's available in a lot of leagues. Let's talk about steals. So a couple of carryovers from this one here. Dyson Daniels and Jalen Suggs appear on this list as well. But as does Gary Payton the second for the Golden State Warriors. So the Golden State Warriors play on the... When do they play? Bring them back up here. They play on the Saturday, so the four-game day. And he is someone that can give you two steals quite comfortably, even in lower minutes. He is um, He's kind of like a... Alex Caruso, Dillon Wright type player that is really good for steals. He also is someone that doesn't hurt your field goal percentage most nights. I think he had a poor game today, but most nights he doesn't hurt your field goal percentage, doesn't turn the ball over, so he really just comes in and gives you those nice steals. Um, So Gary Payton is someone to look at. And Gary Trent Jr., he's uh, rostered in probably more leagues than he should be, but he is someone that you can have a look at to stream in steals, and that is really his value. Uh, I don't see him as a regular every night rotation fantasy player on 12 team leagues, but what he can do is he can come in and give you some steals. And when the Toronto Raptors play on quality games, such as the Saturday where there's four games, they're versing the Boston Celtics, despite only having two games for the week, you can add him in on the Friday when they play the Boston Celtics on the Saturday and then drop him the very next day and move on. So he is someone that can give you those steals. Let's talk the blocks targets. Couple of oh, one player, Gogo Badatso, who's carried over from the rebounds. He obviously blocked five shots last game, and he's a very good shot blocker. He can do that. He can give you a couple of blocks in mid to high twenties in minutes. So if you get him in again, Orlando play those two quality games. You might get uh, five blocks out of him again over those two games, and that can be very vital in swinging that category. Same team, Jonathan Isaac. Um, In limited minutes, he can do really well in that category and the steals category as well. I have a tough time trusting him, but again, I I wanted to sort of see how it went while they were out with Wendell Carter, but his minutes actually went down, which is really strange. He still blocked a shot in that time. The game before that, he played 12 minutes and blocked three shots. So the per minute production is there, but it's a bit more of a roller coaster compared to Goga and Jalen Smith, who's the other player here. So... Of the three, Jonathan Isaac to me is the the riskier play, but if he was to ever get 20 minutes, he could give you five blocks in one game uh, as well as two or three steals. He could really do that, but my confidence in him getting the minutes there are not very high. Jalen Smith, my nemesis from last season, uh, he's actually not been too bad this start of the year. Um, Playing okay minutes, he seems to be the preferred backup over someone like... um, 
uh, Isaiah Jackson, who was our, you know, the darling last season in, in fantasy drafts. But so far on the year, he is averaging only 0.4 blocks, but we know that in the past he has been a decent shot blocker and um, he is starting to get some more minutes. So despite him only having, um, what's that, two blocks on the season, he can definitely be better than this. And I think that this is kind of a case of don't let the averages that he's done so far in the year dissuade you from adding him for something that he definitely can do moving forward. I expect him in two quality games this week to potentially give you a couple, two to three to four blocks over that stretch, um, especially if someone like a Miles Turner gets into foul trouble, which he is prone to do. So um, Goga clearly of these three, the preferred option. Let's talk about field goal percentage. And then Goga and Jalen Smith make the list again and Mo Wagner. So all of these players, Mo Wagner didn't appeal the blocks, shot, uh, blocks stream targets because he's not a good shot blocker. But all of these guys can give you some good, efficient field goal percentage, albeit on lower volume. But again, you're not going to find high volume field goal percentage on the waiver wire in most situations. And then to round it out, the free throw percentage, very hard category to find, but Malik Monk is my absolute favorite for this category. He can definitely get to the line, especially whilst uh, Darren Fox is out and he shoots at a, a high clip. Cole Anthony is solid from there as well. Hasn't been great so far, but historically has been a really good free throw percentage shooter. So I do expect him to improve despite he is only averaging 78.6% from the free throw line so far on nearly five attempts. I do think that that clears 80, 82, 83%. And because he's getting five attempts so far this season, the volume is important there to boost that category up. And Sadiq Bay is a good free throw shooter. I don't think the volume is going to be as high for him compared to some of these other guys, but he is someone that is pretty reliably a good, strong free throw percentage option. And he seems to be going back and forward between him and Jalen Johnson on the bench to starting every second game. So who knows? It's hard to predict, but you can then add him in. They've got the two quality games this week. So you might get one start, one off the bench. Either way, if he gets to the free throw line, here's someone that can um, knock it down with pretty good consistency. And if you want to add him to this, the threes and not hurt your free throw percentage, you can definitely have a look at him over those two quality games. So that will do it for the streaming targets today, guys. We will be doing a buy low and sell high shows over the next couple of days. So stay tuned for that. I'll probably do that after the Monday slate of games. So again, with no Tuesday games, Perfect time to get in there and start trade negotiations. You've got a whole day, whole night of uh, no basketball. So get in there and start trading if you're not over and voting <laughs> over in the States over there. Uh, perfect time for the dust to settle. Have a look at the rankings and things like that. So we're going to discuss a few of those over the next two days. And we've also got some other shows coming your way as well. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Give this video a big old, whack the big old thumbs up button over on YouTube. Uh, give us a five-star rating and review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye.